Hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Talk Ray Bradbury. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do. So here on Let's Talk Ray Bradbury, I have been re uh, reviewing individually the stories of the collection, the stories of Ray Bradbury. There are a hundred of them. We are up to number 45. That story uh, is, or this story is The Jar from 1944. The way this usually goes is I give you a brief synopsis and then at the end share some some notes and some thoughts, basically give my review of the short story. So here we go. Uh, in this story, a hick farmer named Charlie uh, visits a nearby carnival. He becomes obsessed with the freak show and the sideshow and he spends hours gazing into this weird jar of formaldehyde with a creature in it, wondering what it is. So he decides that he's going to haggle with the carny and try and buy it. He does. He buys it for $12 and he loads it onto his horse-drawn wagon and hauls it home back into the hollers to the farms uh, to basically use it to impress his friends and the community and he thinks he's going to gain respect by having this. So um, as he's on his way home, he goes by the local general store where a man named uh, Tom Carmody, who is his cousin, is waiting. And Tom's always laughing at him. He gives him a peek and then he covers the jar back up and says, you know, if you want to if you want to uh, see what it is, see more, uh, you're going to have to come to my house sometime. And that's what happens um, over the coming coming weeks and months um people begin to gather at his home and they'll spend the evening basically sitting in his living room looking at the jar and trying to decide what it is and it's working it's gaining respect for charlie in the community um everybody looking at it um sees something a little bit different something from themselves um, a fisherman sees uh, a mass of jellyfish a black man thinks that it's a mythical creature uh, from which all men sprang a woman sees her dead child who wandered into the swamp many years ago um um, another guy sees um, sees a drowned kitten. His mother, when he was a boy, made him drown a kitten that was unwanted, and it always haunted him. Uh, but uh, his wife, uh, Thetty, uh, Charlie's wife, Thetty, who is always running off and uh, doesn't respect him, um, she's not really having any of it, and she feels sort of jealous of his newfound popularity. So one night, uh, Thetty comes in late, and she says that uh, she and Tom Carmody... Uh, um, who Charlie now realizes she's having an affair with, um, went to the carnival, asked the carny, bribed him, and he basically said that it's just a bunch of junk that he put into a jar. And Charlie becomes enraged by this. Uh, it's going to ruin his fun. It's going to ruin his popularity. He's going to lose his respect in this community of complete dimwits. Um, so um, at the next gathering, uh, somebody inquires as to where Thetty has gone. Has she gone to visit her family again? Uh, Charlie says, yes, yeah, she'll be back in a couple of weeks, but the implication is that pieces of Fetty are now floating in the jar. So, um, it's a fun little horror story. Um, very much has shades of um, modern equivalents like, uh, I think, Tim Burton and Guillermo del Toro. It's very much in good fun. Um, <clears throat> um, I'm also reminded a little bit of Guillermo del Toro's most recent film, Nightmare Alley, just the carny setting, the carnival setting. Um, the circus setting, um, things like that. So it'll give you much those, um, those sort of vibes as you're reading it, um, right down to the slang and sort of this sort of country yokel feel to it. Um, it also has an element of the unknown. It's slightly Lovecraftian, but of course, um, if this were H.P. Lovecraft, the creature would be real and it would be an unknowable horror <laughs> instead of a gimmick sort of used by Bradbury to sort of push this whole narrative along. Um, but, you know, it's moody, it's atmospheric, it's fun, um, you're gonna get, you know, a little bit spooky at times, um, um but it, but it's pretty good. Um, I think the, at the heart of it is this sort of fun little situation, though, where you have basically a community of low lives, people at the, the lowest rung of society, sort of ignorant, illiterate, and they're basically jousting with one another, um, basically fighting, um, for respect, among people who maybe don't warrant that much respect. So that's a pretty interesting take, I think. And I just love that um, uh, Charlie here gets his revenge um, on Thetty and hopefully um, uh, um, hopefully Tom uh, Kermody will get his own too um, sometime after the narrative ends. But yeah, um, fun little story, maybe a bit of a throwaway, but um, good sort of Halloween reading. Um, of course, it's a couple days before the beginning of March here. But, um, yeah, um, Bradbury wrote a number of these, these sort of spooky stories, these sort of October 
themed stories, Halloween themed stories, and this is a pretty good one. So, um, come back in a couple of days if you're going to follow along with me, and we will look at the uh, the Small Assassin from 1946. And that will be number 40, story number 46 of 100 in this collection. So, thank you for tuning in. Until next time, keep it creepy.